I'm here to talk about the rapture. There's a thing called the Shalosh Regalo. S-H-A-L-O-S-H, -S -S not the next word, R-E-G-A-L-I-M, Shalosh Regalo. And these are listed in Deuteronomy 16.16. 16, the three holy days in which every man must come before the Lord and bring a gift. Uh, the first holy feast is Passover, Pesach. Um, at Passover, you have to show up. Uh, the next holy feast is Shavuvo, or Pentecost. Uh, the next holy feast is Tabernacles. Of these three, everyone had to show up. These are the Shalash Regal. They're the most important feasts. God says these are the most important. Why? Okay, let's take a look at it. Um, when did Jesus come to Jerusalem to say that he was God and to die and to shed his blood? He showed up at Passover. He shows up at Passover. Passover is about the blood of the lambs on top of the doorposts in Egypt. The blood of the lambs saved those in Egypt. And now Jesus fulfills that with the blood of the lamb. Him being the spotless lamb, the lamb of God. Jesus fulfills Passover blood for blood. The blood of the lamb in Egypt, his blood now. Pretty important. One of the three most high holy, holy feasts, and he fulfills it. On the day, or at the event, blood for blood. Pentecost, 50 days after they left um, 50 days after the Jews celebrated Passover, Moses went to the mountain and received the law. That is what Pentecost or Shavuot is for a Jew. They were given the law through Moses. What happened when the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost 50 days after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ? When, the Pen when Pentecost happened for the Christians, the Holy Spirit put the law in our hearts. God said, I believe in Zechariah, I could be wrong, I, you know, I know my Bible, but I don't know it that well, um, that he would write on our hearts. He would write his law, his commandments on our hearts. He did that with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit convicts us of our sin, of our righteousness. He writes it on our hearts. So the Holy Spirit, God, in his third person, fulfills Pentecost with Pentecost, law for law. Two for two, Passover and Pentecost, both fulfilled during their event and with the same thing. Passover, Easter, blood for blood, law for, or blood for blood. And I'm not even gonna get into Easter and why we shouldn't be celebrating that. And then we go to Pentecost, law for law, now what's the last what's the last feast? Tabernacles. Why is that important? Tabernacles occurs in the fall, September, October. Um, what is it? It's the celebration of the harvest, of the grape harvest. And when Jesus speaks of harvesting the church or harvesting the wheat and the chaff, you harvest the wheat. You gotta throw it up in the air, the chaff blows away and they burn it, and the wheat falls down and they harvest it and they keep it. So, Jesus is going to harvest his church on tabernacles, fulfilling three for three. Blood for blood, law for law, harvest for harvest. Let's go with that. If Jesus decides to come back, the Father sends him back to fulfill the third of the three high holy feasts by harvesting, which is exactly what the holiday is about. When is that going to happen? Well, let's say it happens tabernacles of this year, 2010. If he comes back in 2010, that's going to be the mark of the beginning of the 70th week of Daniel. Daniel's prophetic calendar, the 70th week. Okay, that marks the beginning. 
He says, the man of lawlessness cannot be revealed until he who is holding him back releases or is, is taken away. And what that literally says is taken out of the middle of, taken out of the midst. If we, the church, are removed from the midst of this sick society that we live in, then the Antichrist is going to have free reign. There's nothing holding him back. When the Holy Spirit leaves this planet, we won't be able to be Christians anymore. We will have to go with it. So, shows up on Tabernacles. That begins the 70th week. Well, if he begins the 70th week at Tabernacles of 2010, then he would end the 70th week at Tabernacles 2017. If he ends it at 2017, then that finishes the entire thing before the generation ends. So once again, it all happens within a generation, 70 years from 20, 1948 to 2018. The interesting thing is of that seven years, right in the center, right in the midpoint, is Passover 2014. That very next blood red tetrad moon on a high Jewish holiday. Being four times in 500 years. Persecution, given the land, given Jerusalem. What do you think is going to happen on that day? It's going to involve the Jews. It's going to be dramatic. I believe, because it is exactly the midpoint of that seven years that we're talking about, that that is when the Antichrist is going to stand in the temple and declare himself to be God. But we're not going to be here for it. What do you think? I don't know what you think. I know what I think. I think it's very plausible. And so, I've decided to make this video and tell you about it. The interesting thing about that this scenario is that the 20, the, the Tabernacles 2010 occurs on September 22nd, 2010. September 22nd is my 49th birthday. Uh, that is my Jubilee year. And that's my birthday. Over here, and this is going to get interesting, on my ankle, wait, is a tattoo. I'm going to move that camera and give you a close-up of this. Because it was written for a book I was working on a long time ago, and... The book has since long gone away. But the tattoo's there, and the tattoo's about 10 years old. I got it in 1998. They didn't discover tetrads until 2007. And I have one on my ankle in the form of a tattoo. So let's get the camera down here, and I'll take a look at it. my tattoo. If you look at it, that's the sun, the earth, the moon, and the moon is black. And it's a sea with a circle around it. Originally that was supposed to be uh, Through the Eye of an Arc of Arc. There's a book I was working on. The sea was the circle was the copyright symbol. But now the way I look at it is this. That's the sun behind the earth with the moon in the foreground and it's black. It's a perfect lunar eclipse or a tetrad. And the center of it all is C, which stands for Christ. My birthday, 22 September 1961. I don't know why, but I'm surrounded in very, very strange things. 22 September 1961. I'll be 59 on, or excuse me, I'll be 49 on Tabernacles of 2010. I got a daughter that's drawn some strange pictures that are biblically relevant. Or at least I can find the scriptures that pertain to her explanations. And she did them when she was five, before she could read. She could read Ten Terrible Dinosaurs, but she couldn't read the Bible. Um, so I got a lottery ticket that I should have won but didn't win. Um, I'm beating the odds on all kinds of crazy stuff. 
And now I'm taking a look at scripture and, and, and trying to decipher this stuff. Am I nuts? I don't think I'm crazy. Uh, as a matter of fact, I got some papers proven not crazy. But the point is this. NASA says there's tetrads they fall on these days. Those line up with Jewish holidays. The Bible says what it says about the Shalash Regalim. Jesus did show up and did what he did on all those holidays. One of those holidays is coming up. Something's going to happen. If it happens, I hope you're part of it. And, if it. and if you're not part of it when it happens, you need to know what happened. Because they're going to try and explain it away as aliens came and snatched up Christians. Or aliens came and snatched up a bunch of people. Or uh, they all we this group of people moved on to a new uh, understanding, a new uh, consciousness, and we're no longer here. But they're going to try and explain it away, because this world system is run by Satan, and he hates the truth. And I would imagine I'm going to face even more persecution for putting this out, and I know that I will, because a lot of people are just going to flat out think I'm nuts. But the Bible says what it says, and my life has been what it has been. I've got pictures and videos and I can back everything up in court and if you want to go there, we'll go there. But really, there's no point. It's going to happen very quickly. But know this. If you're a Christian and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, get into His Word and know His voice. Check out what I'm talking about. You know, watch this again. Write down the things that are important to you. Look them up. Because he warns you three times on that day. Don't go back inside. Don't come back from the field. And don't be like Lot's wife. He's warning you about something. It's not just going to be, hey, I believe in Jesus and up I go. Or, hey, I believe in Jesus and everything's going to be happy hunky-dory. He gives you a warning because he's afraid that you will make a mistake. Get in there and find out why he's warning you, what he's warning you about. I would not warn you about a locomotive, a train locomotive, gonna, that's going to come barrel through your third floor window because it's never going to happen unless you live in Chicago. Then it might. l track. Anyway, I'm not going to warn you about something that has never going to happen. There's no reason to be warned. You don't warn a kid about the stove while he's out playing on the playground. He's not going to burn himself in the playground. You warn him when he's close to the stove. Jesus is warning us about something. What is it? Do you know what it is? Do you know what the deception is? Do you know how Satan's going to try and deceive you? I believe I've explained that to you. And I hope you get it. This is all I got. Um... You know, protect your kids from the crap that goes on, excuse me. Protect your kids from general media. It's not from God. And if you truly love your children, you'll get them away from it. You'll turn off the TV, you'll throw it out, you'll start reading to them. Um, you want your kid to read? Read to them. Don't stick him in front of Sesame Street. He's not going to learn to read there. Um, teach them it yourself. Develop a relationship. Bond with your children. I thank the Lord. When my daughter was born, I was a stay-at-home dad. I gave up a job. Hmm, that's not necessarily true. I got fired from my job, but the reason I got fired is because I couldn't stand it. And I knew what was coming. I knew I was going to have to go back to waiting tables and to take care of my, my daughter during the daytime because I didn't want to give a whole bunch of money and spend time working overtime just to pay the nanny so that the nanny could have a ball with my little girl and I could come home and go, oh, that's what she looks like. Okay, well, it's time for bed. You know, that's not the way I raise kids. So, the back of my car got a bumper sticker that says, busy parents suck. I made it myself, and it's true. Because it sucks to be one, it sucks to have one. And my daughter knows the truth on that. Because she's had one. And I've been one. And... I thank God now that I actually uh, have slowed down and, and, and 
not in that circle of just madness trying to make more, make more, make more. The American dream, the problem with the American dream is that people have forgotten that our kids are the American dream. They are. Everything we do, we say we do for them. But what have we, what have we given them? We've given them a, a more hectic lifestyle. We've given them, you know, lots of great things, but we don't have time to show them love or how to respect themselves or how to ensure that they don't get taken advantage of. If you're not going to take care of your kids, what good are you? I tried to take care of mine, and I got slammed by the courts and everyone else. Protect your children. Get them into God's hands, because he's the only one that can protect them. You make Christians out of those babies, because Jesus is the only thing that can save them, no matter how much money you make, no matter how much you think you can be there, you can't. There will be a time when your children will be alone, and they will need someone, and you won't be available. Please make sure that Jesus Christ is, and put them in contact with him. That's all I got. We'll see what time says, because September 22nd, 2010 is coming up, and if it happens, it happens. And then those of you who got this video and went, wow, I'm so glad I watched that video, or it'll come and go, and I'll just go, wow, I got it wrong. You know, because maybe I do have it wrong. Maybe I don't. But I'm looking forward to finding out. And if I don't have it wrong, I want to know that I did what I was supposed to do. That I was a good servant and a good steward. Because the last thing I want to hear is the Lord rejecting me because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. So, may the blessing of the Lord Jesus Christ rest upon you. And may you see the truth. Even if I don't see the truth, may you see the truth. I gotta go with what I think is the truth. And this is what I think it is, or I wouldn't be saying it. God bless. And uh, His will be done.